So that, of course, one state's loss can be another state's gain. But let me quickly put that across to my esteemed guest who's joining me at this point live. We have Harish Biju, brand guru and someone who's an eminent Bengalurian to take us through the logistics of this move. Mr. Biju, what do you make of this decision? Reserving private jobs up to 75% in Karnataka, in non-management roles, 50% in management roles. Is this simply feasible? Okay. Uh, see, there is this proposal which says, you know, 50% of jobs at one particular level, at the managerial level, and 70% of jobs uh, at the C and D category, which is the lower levels. Uh, I think, you know, the proposal has come through uh, with language primacy in mind. I am mm. personally a proponent and a champion of lang language primacy, local language primacy. Mm. Okay. Uh, I love Canada. And I think Canada must get better attention, better primacy in literally everything, whether it be on the shop boards, whether in, it be in, um, in every sphere of life. Uh, mm. The idea is that anybody who lives in Karnataka, it would be lovely if everybody spoke the language or at least managed with the language. Uh, you know, so that's a great thing. But when it comes to this move, uh, which really talks about uh, you know, reservation of jobs, uh, basis, an SSLC certificate, and somebody who can speak the language, etc. It's a bit of a worry for me. Uh, because okay. what it does is, it kind of, you know, uh, throws a spanner in the works of private sector development. There are mm -hmm. three sectors of the economy uh, in, when it comes to jobs. One is the private sector, the second is the government sector, and then there's the non-government sector. Now, when it comes to the government sector, if you want to keep reservation of jobs, please go ahead and do it. But when it comes to the private sector, please don't intervene and interfere in the way business is run by the private sector. The private sector knows exactly what it's doing. It does its best. Uh, and, uh, you know, it is very, very centric uh, to, uh, you know, good performance. And mm. I think a merit-based private sector is what Karnataka boasts of. I don't think we should tamper with it. So, Mr. Biju, the state argument is that priority has to be given to sons of the soil. Does that hold water when 21st century Bangalore is essentially built on migrant labor, built on their taxes, built on the economy they spend in the they uh, spend in the city, and built on their efforts effectively? I would put it this way, that the son of the soil must be respected and the son of the soil must get his, her or their share as well. But when it comes to a city like Bengaluru, we are mm. really talking about the city being a mixed city. You know, we are a mixture of some 27 different states, people coming from everywhere. We are a mixed culture. We are a mixed about food, about dressing habits, about, about the way we uh, partake of festivals, etc. Bengaluru is a fantastic ecosystem for that. The Kanadiga is a very large-hearted person. The Kanadiga embraces everybody who comes in. The Kanadiga knows no jingoism. Mm. And in this kind of a situation, I think the city has flourished. We have people from all over contributing to the progress of the city. But I think, you know, what's really happened is language primacy uh, has come to the fore now. Uh, fundamentally, because, you know, there are subliminal uh, you know, situations uh, when Canada uh, feels not to be in the mainstream. And I think a language of a state must be in the mainstream. It cannot be a side stream. So that's a good thing. But when it comes to merit, reservations, I think that's very important not to tread onto this territory. Okay. I think this should be a 10-year plan. You, you, you do say that, you know, after 10 years, we'll implement this as a rule. Well, People will prepare over the next 10 years. Everybody who comes in from outside will learn the local language. Everybody will embrace the local language. And I think that's a better way of doing it. You need to give time to implement such an action. It cannot okay. be done on a particular date. Okay, my final question to Arish Vijur, and we've got some big news coming in also before that. What damage does this potentially do to brand Bengaluru as a major investment destination for MNCs? You know, at this given point of time, it doesn't do any damage. Uh, because, you know, we have a savvy uh, set of people in government, and I hope they're listening. 
uh, our chief minister mr sidramaiah is a very savvy person our deputy chief minister mr dk shivkumar is a very solid entity and equally savvy i'm sure they're listening and i'm sure mm-hmm. they will take the correct action i think what's happened is an announcement has been made without prior consultation with industry and i think that's wrong uh, because you know industry is just one phone call away and uh, all you need to do is maybe we make 20 phone calls and you have the entire industry assembled in front of you consultation is easy so consult and go ahead maybe a great thing to do but at this point of time i think uh, brand bengaluru remains as solid as positive as energetic as ever before and i hope it does in the future as well all right Before-